Now I'll be first taking my one talk on the nucleotomy. So there have been many techniques of the nucleotomy when we are learning. The first reproducible technique which became popular was divide and conquer. There was little more FACO energy used, it was a little more time consuming and pieces were too large to pull out of the excess margin, particularly if the nucleus was big. So then came the technique of direct chop. In this, we used to bury it and take the, our chopper to the delineation line and pull towards it and chop the pieces. It took care of all these problems, but it was difficult in a soft catech. It was a very difficult in a hard catech and failure rate was high. So sometimes you'll get a good crack, sometimes you will not get a good crack. And it was good for grade 2, grade 3 nuclei. So then came in a stop and chop. The name came stop and chop because of you start as a divide and conquer, then you stop at after making one trench and go to the chopping mode. This is how it derived its name, stop and chop. So start at a divide and conquer, make one trench, stop and go to the chopping mode. Once you are doing this technique, you need to remember the nucleus anatomy, which is convex backward. So if your trench is horizontal like this, it won't be deep enough over here. So your trench has to be like this, conforming to the anatomy of the nucleus. And harder the nucleus, more convex it is backwards. So when we talk of the nucleus mole, there are certain steps, trenching and splitting, chopping and phaco aspiration. So let's see how to have a trench which is deepest at the center and conforms to the nucleus contour. So normally I prefer to have a, what I call as a V trench. Instead of making first trench in the center, if you make a first trench in the center, it is only tip wide while the sleeves are wider than that. So the one central trench is not able to accommodate these sleeves when you want to go into the depth of the nucleus. So you need to have a trench which is wider than the tip, at least two tip wider or maybe two and a half tip wider so that your sleeve can be accommodated over there. And if you make first central pass, then to widen it, it keeps on slipping into the center when you try to widen it. Or you will have to turn the FACO tip like this to widen it. So what I do is I make, instead of making first in the center, I make like V. I go on this side, then go on this side so that it goes like this V. And once we have created a V like this and we rotate it, now the sleeve is thickest on this side towards the incision. Now I have got a trench which is widest over here which can accommodate my sleeve now. So first if you make a V and then if you rotate it, now it is able to accommodate your sleeve well. Now you can make the another V or you can convert which becomes like an X or a straight line or you can go straight away and make it like a Y. But this part will be able to accommodate the V. So it is on the front surface, it is like a V. On the depth, also it is like a V. So as you keep on going deeper and deeper, you can keep on making it narrower and narrower, there is no problem. So that your sleeve keeps on accommodating all along and the, for the final pass, because you don't have to accommodate the sleeve over there, so you really don't have to make it too wide. In fact, if it is vertical deep, it is easier to split. And when we talk of a splitting, we know that if we want to break a rubber band, if you keep your hands far apart, you need so much of a space to break it. If you keep your hands very close, you can break it very easily with little movement. Because the space is a constraint in the eye. So the two instruments which you are using for the splitting have to be close to the area you want to split. That means if you put on an instrument over here at the top of the trench and try to split it, it will keep on going like this. But you put your instrument at the depth of it and try to lift it towards the periphery, it will split over there. So they put your instruments vertically and horizontally where you want to have the splitting. So do not put them away where you want to have the splitting. This is the one, another way of splitting. You can go into FACO aspiration mode, pull it over there. Now this instrument has to go at the depth of the trench. And if the first time if you do not get a crack, Go to the where the fibers are not split, go and have a grip over there and then go and split over there. So keep on positioning your chopper, have a good grip and you can split it very easily. Once we have done this, we come to the second part which is chopping. We have stopped over here. 
For chopping, we need to create a vacuum seal. We have got to have a grip on the nucleus or lollipop the nucleus, firmly hold the nucleus with the FACO tip. And then we can do whatever chopping we want to do, central chop, peripheral chop or modified chop. What is a vacuum seal? Vacuum seal is that you first go to the hardest part of the nuclear. Do not have this touch very superficial. Do not go close to the posterior capsule. Nearly at the depth of upper two-third and a lower one-third, you put your FACO tip and nudge the nucleus slightly. Once you have got nudging over there, then give a little bit burst of energy with your FACO foot pedal so that half a one millimeter of the nuclear strip gets buried inside. Now take your foot off from the FACO mode it should be only in an irrigation aspiration mode. So that by its suction, it keeps on holding it. If you feel you are losing the tip, give a little more energy and go in and hold it again. If you are too superficial, then you might lose the grip. If you have losing the grip because of your too superficial, then change the position, go to the stronger position so that you have got a good, a strong grip before you go for a chopping. And Peripheral chop was the initial chop which I described. In this, we put on our chopper underneath the excess margin. We go horizontally, put the chopper over there, then turn the chopper vertical and pull the chopper towards, after we turn it vertical, and then pull it, pull it, and pull it towards the tip, and finally move it sideways when it comes close to you. That was a peripheral chop. So in this, first you put on a chopper, Create a vacuum seal, because if you could create a vacuum seal before putting the chopper, you may lose it while putting, negotiating the chopper under the, the excess margin. So chopper is lying there, horizontal, create a vacuum seal, turn the chopper vertical, pull it towards the tip and pull sideways. But this was more cumbersome. Then came the central chop. In a central chop, you don't have to negotiate your chopper inside the excess margin. Chopper remains within the excess margin and your force is directed vertically down. So the central chop is easier because you don't have to manipulate. But the peripheral chop is stronger because you start from the full thickness of the nucleus and it cuts in one go much more easily as compared to the central chop. Now more chances of tumbling in a central chop if your chopper is not placed close to the tip. In a central chop, your chopper has to be placed very, very close adjacent to the tip. If you place it 2-3 millimeters away, it will tumble. So the maximum grip of the tip is close where you have created a vacuum seal. Now if you put on a chopper over here, see it is, has to be very close to the tip. If it is close to the tip and instead of burying it straight away, keep on pulling and keep on burying instead of burying in one go where it can tumble. So pull it towards the center keep on burning and keep on repositioning. You can see that for the splitting the fibers, every time I'm repositioning my chopper. So wherever the fibers you want to split, go there and put your chopper over there. And this is the, I take the advantage of both the chopping techniques, peripheral and central. First half, do the central chop. And a second half, instead of now negotiating my chopper, Beyond the rexus margin, I bring the peripheral rexus of the nucleus itself out of the rexus margin so that I can start from the periphery, I can chop easily. So I don't have to negotiate the chopper, but I'm starting from the periphery of the nucleus by bringing the periphery of the nucleus once I've created a space in the eye or if the nucleus is small. Once you remove half of the nucleus, another half can be easily pulled out of the rexus margin. Now you will see that we go bury this, nudge it, give energy, now only vacuum, bring the nucleus periphery out, start the chopping and cracks in one go. So this is a easier and a faster chop, but it's a modified in a way that I do not have to negotiate under the periphery. And always make sure that these pieces are made small. If the cataract is hard, keep on crushing them, make an effort to be away from the cornea and particularly away from the central cornea because if you are done everything good and if the patient is not able to see next day, it's no fun. And while removing the last piece, of course, you can put on a viscoelastic. Again, put it over there, bring it out of the rexus margin and chop, start from the periphery. So this is a peripheral chop which is modified where we pull the rexus. Uh, you put on You ready? 
सो द चॉपिंग इज वेरी इसेंशियल पार्ट ऑफ होल ऑफ द पैको प्रोसीजर डायरेक्ट चॉप टू माई माइंड स्टॉप एंड चॉप इज द बेस्ट टेक्निक विच टेक्स केयर ऑफ ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ न्यूक्लियस इट रेस्पेक्टिव इज हार्ड वेदर इट्स अ सॉफ्ट डायरेक्ट चॉप इज मोर कंबरसम इट इज एडवाइज टू यूज दैम ओनली इफ यू गॉट ए हाई एंड मशीन्स विच कैन टेक फाइव हंड्रेड सिक्स हंड्रेड वैक्यूम एंड कैन होल्ड इट वेल इट विल नॉट वर्क इन ए वेरी सॉफ्ट कैटेक इट इज वेरी वेरी डिफिकल्ट इन लेदरी कैटरेक इवन इफ यू एबल टू चॉप मस यू क्रिएट ए स्पेस इन दिस सेंटर वेन यू आर डूइंग पैको एक्सप्रेशन यू आर अवे फ्रॉम द कॉर्निया सो आई माई पर्सन एंड द एनर्जी डेलवर्ड वाइल्ड मेकिंग ट्रेंस हैज गॉट नो को लैक्टल डैमेज वॉट्स एवर बिकॉज इट इज फार अवे फ्रॉम द कॉर्निया यू आर टेकन एनफ ऑफ टाइम टू कूल द टिप सो do the stop and chop technique which is far more involved so thank you very much for your kind attention